All right, everyone, for a couple of years, some of the more, maybe the Ron Paulites within the GOP and some people, including myself, uh, have wanted Trump to, to go in and audit the Fed or figure out sort of, you know, where's all the money going, what's actually going on with the economy at large. Uh, and then he stubbornly resisted doing it. He alluded to it for a brief period of time, like he was hanging out with Rand Paul, I think, sort of late last year. Uh, and it looked like people were hopeful, but then again, it was around the time that he was like, well, you know, maybe I'll, I'll build the wall by appropriating Pentagon funding and stuff, and that never happened, so people got a little demoralized. Now, though, he's openly, uh, he's coming out and saying, well, you know, I wonder if I can fire the head of the Federal Reserve, because they keep raising interest rates. I've warned them this is the second time not to do that. They're bringing the market down, which, you know, sort of is happening. Uh, correlation and causation, though, make sure, <laughs> very important to notice. Uh, I would say this. Um, it, it does seem strange that the same groups of people, the same general chunk of economists that thought Trump is going to be horrific, horrific for the economy, all of a sudden now are so self-assured uh, that the economy is fine and can take the you know increased interest rates and things of that nature. Now, of course, as not an economic expert, uh, I don't know the finer workings of the economy either. But then again, I have a feeling that most of these people don't. When you have like, so like Krugman. Uh, supposedly like this, this fucking uh, genius about everything money, he came out, he was one of the first people to say, if Trump is elected, you can look at another Great Depression right on the horizon. Two years go by, uh, the stock market for most of those two years doing well, unemployment still down, wage growth still steady, job growth still decent. Uh, no Great Depression. It, 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 we need a lot more to happen in order for there to be truly a significant economic downturn. I will tell you this. Um, a bunch of stocks correcting, preface partially on the fact that these big tech firms keep fucking themselves, uh, is not going to largely impact Main Street America. Th there's a disconnect. Uh, in, it's not like in China. And this is something that I mentioned years ago. If you look at, at like China's stock market, when they had their downturn, why it affected them so badly, a lot of their stock is held by the new middle class in China. That is, people, normal people have invested heavily into it because they're like, hey, it brings a return. I want wealth. They've actually got a hyper-capitalistic style of element within that part of their economy. We're talking, we're talking a population larger than most countries, roughly 100 million Chinese people, part of this new middle class. That's the bulk of the holdings within their stock market. And then to keep their markets afloat, they kept re uh, injecting pensioners' money and stuff like that actually into the stock market over there to try to keep it afloat. And it, it kind of sort of worked, but it <laughs> had its own drawbacks. Here in the United States, does the average person in the middle class hold stocks? No. If they do, how much stock do they hold? Not very much. Most of it's held by the one percenters. That includes a lot of business owners and a lot of people that employ uh, large segments of the economy, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean the mom and pop store owners. It probably doesn't mean your your local hometown dentist or something like that. They probably have little to nothing in the stock market. They might have some mutual funds and have a couple bonds or something, but by and large, not really. What I would say is going after the Fed might cause some uh, <laughs> some problems in and of itself. However. Uh, because if it looks, if, if all of these people, you're, you're saying they control the economy, right? Or at least they have undue leverage over it, which is why you would say audit the Fed. I agree with that. Let's say you start going after them and saying, okay, well, I'm serious this time. We're, we're going to audit you. We're going to, you know, bring your corruption to an end. What are they going to do? They're going to use their influence to try to bring the economy down to stop the person who's in office, namely Trump. His, 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 the buoyancy of his support is partially due to a good economy. In fact, I would say largely due to money. There are some people who still see him as like a uh, head honcha of populism and stuff. He is trying to still negotiate on the wall. I think the government's still shut down at the moment, partially. Uh, that's fine, but a lot of his support, at least the softer support, the, the support that can be eroded more easily down to that low that he was at at 35 or 36 percent, a lot of that almost 10 points of support is made up of people like myself who primarily appreciate the economic side. It's like, yeah, building the wall, that's fine. Um, securing the borders, that's, that's great. Certainly peace in Korea would be a wonderful thing. Ultimately, though, the one part of his, his proposals that impacts me the most is the economic side. What's my tax rate going to be? What do I get to deduct? Uh, everything else under the sun. Is there demand, you know, right now, is the economy strong enough so people are going to buy my books? <laughs> that's important as well. Economic downturn, it affects literally everyone. Um, but Trump openly musing about, you know, speculating whether he has the ability to fire the head of the Fed, 
uh, is quite interesting. And I'm actually, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I, I don't think Trump actually knows either. The Fed is so opaque. The way in which our money, our economy is handled is so opaque and odd and, and structured in such a weird way that, you know, I don't know, who knows the answer? I don't even know. Maybe the head of the Fed doesn't know who can fire me. He's like, yeah, I don't know. I've been appointed. I, I, know, I know I can step down. Uh, can I be fired? Who would fire me? <laughs> There's nobody else within the Fed can do it. Uh, essentially having this uh, weird rogue money printing agency, uh, I think, strikes some people as a little bit strange. By the way, not uh, saying this as an economic hard right, uh, right winger saying, well, if fiat currency is evil, we should go back to just bargaining and stuff and have no taxes. I'm, I'm not saying that. Uh, but we do need some reform there because, you know, money goes missing and mistakes can be made. You know, one mistake, an honest mistake could bring an entire economy down, erase a trillion dollars worth of wealth or something. That's quite a, quite a lot of power and should be wielded appropriately. Ultimately, yes, I think Trump does understand money. I think he does understand economics and business. He has specific qualifications that show that he does. He, the pragmatic, actual, what's happened since he took office shows that he can manage an economy. Some people say, well, it's just the Obama economy. The Trump economy kicks in when things go bad, essentially. I deny that. I disagree with that. I think that that's an excuse. I think that that's the Democrats' partisan way of trying to hold back his support. And really nothing more than that. That's about all. Peace out.